I'm going to be talking about recording sounds for use in Sonic Art. And I'm going to be referring to my book, uh, Sonic Art, An Introduction to Electroacoustic Music Composition. And very early on, page 4 and 5 of the book, of chapter 1, I talk about recording. I talk about the, how any sound can be used uh, as a potential source for a piece of sonic art. And as a very simple example, I'm going to be using these two balloons here. I'm going to record them very closely. So microphones are going to be very close to the balloons to get the really intimate sounds of a balloon. I know that sounds strange, but there are certain sounds that we can't hear in everyday life when you hear a balloon, but up close they really sound extraordinary. So we're going to try and create as many sounds as we can from a balloon. So the ingredients at the balloon end is the following. Microphone stands, probably two, but if you're going to record in multi-channel, you might want four or more to surround the balloon and create uh, recordings from all angles of the balloon. But we're just going to work in stereo for now. And you want a microphone and a mic clip. Out of the back of the microphone are three prongs. On the mic cable, you have two ends. An end with prongs and an end with holes. So obviously, the end with holes goes into the back of the microphone. This is commonly termed the female end of an XLR to XLR cable. And this is the male end. So I plug the female end in here and I will plug this end into my computer interface. So now, with PD extended open, I'm going to open a file on the USSS toolkit under pure data examples open me first I'm going to open the blank canvas and there's nothing in that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an object box and in that object box, I'm going to type USSS.output, give it a name, my out. And I'm going to put an object box, USSS.input, and I'm going to call that one my in. And I'm just going to join the left hand mic in to the left hand of the output box like that and the right hand similarly so now I can see with the DAC on and that saved I should be able to see my left microphone and my right microphone the sound source we need to make sure we're getting some good level at the microphone and that will be a mixture of proximity to the microphone and also a level control on the interface. And you would think, well why am I not starting already with a blown up balloon? Well actually the whole process of blowing up the balloon might be an interesting sound. So now I need to make a record file you must make sure that DSP here is on, DSP is on, before you click in this box here to create a record file. I'm going to put this in the top level of my USSS toolkit folder and I'm going to call it balloon.wav. There you see it. And then I just need to click on record and I'll start recording sound. So I seem to have quite a bit of level coming in on my microphone, so you can see it here. Uh, and I'm going to blow the balloon up. Here we go. So I'm going to get nice and close. 
The problem with microphones is they're very sensitive to air. So don't blow at a microphone, blow through the microphone. Okay, we've got some air in. And that's a kind of inhale, blowing up sort of sound. We could also, at this point, have another go at this, because you always need two takes or three takes of this, but we could let some air out. And there are various things you could do with expelling air. So here we have uh, a very similar balloon, just a different colour, blown up, and now I'm making very small sounds, and you can see I'm getting some reasonable level in PD as I'm recording, and as you can see the level controls here. And like any singer in a pop band, if you make louder sounds, move, for, move further away from the microphone. So I've recorded two uh, sequences uh, playing the balloon to uh, their destruction, literally. Uh, and I can have a look at these in a program called Audacity, which is a free download. Just type Audacity into Google to get it. Well, it's a very nice little sound editor. And I drag the file into Audacity and I see two channels, a left channel, and a right channel here. Um, I can see some good dynamic range, quite a lot of quiet sounds, uh, some nice full dynamic range here, and a red line here, uh, which when you click on view show clipping, Audacity points out to you where you've played a sound that's too loud for the system to record. This is where the balloon blew up. So let's just have a listen back. In the composition process, you would uh, play through the sound files again and note the bits that are really interesting. So for example, here, I've got a really nice little sequence there of a long held note and that is quite a high note so one of the things I might want to do is stretch it out and pitch shift it down to see what we can get so I'm just going to now edit that out so I've highlighted it like you would highlight any sound in a or any phrase in a word processor I'm going to go file export selection if you're working on a Macintosh, you would use AIFF format or in a PC, a WAV format. Um, this WAV format signed 16 bit is OK, but as other uncompressed files, if you click options, we're using WAV signed 24 bit. That just makes our sound files that little bit more accurate. You do not want to be working with MP3s. And you can see now that file has come into my folder and I can look at it in much more detail. So I'm going to load up uh, from Pure Data Examples Open Me First, page 50, granulation. So if you look at page 50 in the book, you can uh, read about granular synthesis. Essentially what a granular synthesizer does is it takes a, a look at a small chunk of sound and it repeats it over and over again. And with each chunk of sound, and these chunks are in the order of 100 milliseconds long, you can change the pitch, you can change the spatialization. Um, and we're going to load a sound file into memory and then we can take chunks of sound from the whole of the sound file or from just one tiny bit of the sound file. So it's like sampling a tiny bit of acoustic DNA and then replicating that 
uh, and modifying it slightly. 